Hello, I'm June Skye, and like you, I'm wild about Washington. The pinks are back. Pink salmon are a favorite for a lot of Washington anglers because they might be easier to catch than other species. Also, if you have a youngster who wants to break into salmon fishing, pinks are a good start. Odd-numbered years are pink salmon years in Washington, and pink salmon are really a great way to introduce kids to salmon fishing. Uh, August is pretty much the time when you really want to focus on pink, and they're available everywhere in Puget Sound from CQ all the way down to Tacoma and up through the San Juans. So pinks are really easy to catch. Essentially, try to locate them with your fish finder. And once you do, um, you, you want to put your gear down at that depth. We're using downriggers today. And we're finding the pink anywhere from 50 to 100 feet. For saltwater, a standard pink setup would be a small flasher and a small pink hoochie. We've probably got about oh, 20 inches of leader, but the leader length isn't all that important. Um, Traditionally, a lot of guys like the big white flashers, and these certainly work, but we've been using the smaller ones to try to uh, enjoy the fight of the fish a little more. You can also uh, use a dodger and a small pink hoochie. Um, none of the, 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 it's not critical what size hook you use or the leader. Uh, these aren't big fish. They're not going to tear the rod out of your hands. The most important thing is just to have a hoochie with a little action so the, the dodger or the flasher gives it some action. So we've also got a, a small pink spoon that we can use and we can put this down without the flasher so we can uh, enjoy the fight even a little bit more. When you move to fresh water, you want to use some smaller spoons and you basically just plunk them. Some Dick Knights, FSTs, Wicked Willies, uh, any of these small spoons like this. Pink are a terrific fish to, to get kids started on salmon fishing. Generally, once you find them, uh, the, the action is pretty fast and furious. Pretty much as soon as you get down to them, uh, within five minutes you should have one on again, and that keeps the kids' attention span. They're, they're not going to get bored on you. They just sit there and reel them in all day long. Uh, salmon fishing is fun if you know what to do and if you get a lot of fish. It's so fun that you can barely even imagine it. So in early August, the place to fish for pink is pretty much the Nia Bay CQ area. They'll start trickling into Port Angeles by the first week of August or so. Um, by the middle of August, they'll, they'll be distributed pretty well throughout mid Puget Sound. So Port, An Port Angeles, Port Townsend, even Possession Bar, Everett Edmonds area, down into through to Tacoma. Towards the end of August, a little more in the San Juans. Um, but pretty much mid-August is the peak and then they should be just about everywhere that you want to fish for them except possibly uh, deep south sound. Here are other fishing opportunities in Washington during the next few weeks. Establishing the endangered western pond turtle continues to be successful. A recent batch of turtles raised at Woodland Park Zoo were marked, radio tagged, and turned loose in a Mason County pond, which offered excellent habitat and a chance for a new population to prosper. 
To get the turtles ready to release, we have to have them marked so we know the individuals, so we can keep track of them. They all have pit tags embedded them in them at the zoo, and then we're at, um, assigning each of them an individual number, which is notched into the scoots. We also weigh and measure all of them before we release them. And then a few of them we're attaching transmitters to so that we can continue to track them once they're released and determine their uh, survivorship and habitat use once they're released into the ponds. We've got our 17 little western pond turtles fresh out of Woodland Park Zoo and today they get their freedom here in this pond on state land in Mason County. The western pond turtle is an endangered species in Washington State and we have recovery goals that we've established for increasing the numbers to the point where they can be taken off of our endangered species list. Here in the Puget Sound lowlands we're looking for three populations, three different places with a minimum of 200 turtles. And so the uh, 26 plus 17, 43 turtles that we've put here in the last week is, is our start on that population that we hope will eventually reach 200. We are devoting a lot of energy to western pond turtle recovery. For me it's a big deal and I am rather unusual as a biologist in Washington State in having a lot of western pond turtle work in my annual workload. I, I I work on turtles that are up in uh, the Lakewood vicinity. I work on protecting their nests every year and um, getting the little hatchlings off to Woodland Park Zoo where they're raised for a year where there's high survival, high growth rate, and we can get them back out when they're big enough that they're not going to be as easily taken by predators. So there's a lot going on that I'm involved with and similar things are happening down the Columbia River Gorge that other biologists are doing. So it's a pretty big deal. In the last 10 years, western pond turtles have increased dramatically based on our efforts, the efforts of the Woodland Park Zoo and the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife and a host of volunteers and, and the Oregon Zoo and others. Um, let's see, 10 years ago, I would say it's pretty safe to say we had one-fifth or less the number of turtles that we have today. They're an innocuous animal, they're not going to bite anybody or poison anybody, but they're also simply a part of native western Washington and they're part of the natural heritage of our area. And for me, it's desirable to maintain that natural heritage and, and really try and maintain the character of western Washington that evolved over thousands of years rather than sort of giving in to uh, Scott's broom and uh, tansy ragwort and all the exotic species, whether it's possums or whatever, that could take over our environment and make western Washington and look like any other place uh, around the U.S. It was called BioBlitz, and it was a 24-hour effort by several organizations to take a biological snapshot of a watershed near Gig Harbor in Pierce County. The results might even give local landowners a chance to save a few dollars. Well, the goal was in a 24-hour period to collect as many different species as we could and the reason for that was twofold. First, we were using it to, uh, we had predicted a, a number of species that would use the type of habitats that are found in this valley. And this was an effort to confirm that those species actually uh, reside here. The second goal of this project was to get that information to the landowners by taking them out in the field with us, letting them become a biologist kind of for the day, and then um, letting them use the, the uh, wildlife information to apply for the uh, Pierce County's uh, public benefits rating system which gives them a tax break for keeping their property a portion of their property in green vegetated state. It was hosted by the Pierce County Biodiversity Alliance which has members from Tahoma Audubon, uh, Pierce County Planning and Land Services, Tahoma Metro Parks, w Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, University of Washington, and Friends of Pierce County. They hosted, members from those hosted it. But we had specialists here from U.S. Forest Service, uh, the National Park, the Point Defiance Zoo, uh, UC Berkeley, University of Puget Sound, University of Washington, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, just to name a few. This was uh, about collecting as many different wildlife species as we could in 24 hours using a whole team of different kind of specialists 
mammals, birds, amphibians, reptiles, plants, and um, fish and invertebrates. Specialists coming out to collect as many different types of species as they can in 24 hours. The goal for the community is to try to plan wisely in this valley. It's a really hydrologically rich valley. It's got a lot of streams and creeks and estuary and lake. And so if the people can build in this valley with their idea of trying to maintain some type of vegetation, some percent of their property in vegetation, especially on those waterways for, for wildlife and also for the, the rural atmosphere that's out here, um, and then build their homes, the homes that they want, with that thought in mind, I think that they're going to win in the end. It's a win-win situation. It's smart planning. If you want to give your support to Washington's wildlife, you'll soon be able to show that support on your car or your truck. If you act now, you can have a special wildlife license plate with one of the first 25 numbers. Beginning in January 2006, Washington residents will have the opportunity to purchase a wildlife background plate for their car. The Department of Fish and Wildlife has sponsored five plates through the legislature in 2005, and each of those plates uh, will go to support wildlife resources. Of the five plates, there are the eagle, an orca, a deer, an elk, and a bear. Uh, each of those plates goes to fund specific activities. These plates will all uh, be available beginning January 2nd, 2006, and you can go to your local Department of Vehicles licensing agent to uh, order these plates. If you're one of those people who wants to have the first plate of, a, of one of these special background plates, you have a chance to become one of the owners of the number one through 25 as the Department of Fish and Wildlife has the authority to select those people to receive those plates. To do so, the Department of Fish and Wildlife is holding a drawing that you can sign up for on the, on the web at uh, the Department of Fish and Wildlife's homepage and you can sign up to be number one. Here's where to see some of Washington's wildlife during the coming weeks. This has been Wild About Washington, brought to you by the employees of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Working together, we can save Washington's outdoor heritage for future generations. Thank you for watching, and please visit our website for information on outdoor recreation and great touring destinations.